I am not Nikki Gordon Bloomfield, and this is not a car review. I'm Winter Tashin, and this is going to be a first look, first drive of the all new Volkswagen ID4 all wheel drive. Nikki reviewed the ID4 first edition not that long ago. Today, I get to drive the all wheel drive. It's a bit of a different beast. When Nikki drove the original, she said it was sort of like your boring uncle who never sort of stopped nattering on about your 401k. So the question is, does uncle bring more excitement this time? So I've been driving this car for a few minutes. I've opened the roof because, you know, it's lovely. Uh, and I love that it has a sunshade, unlike say my te husband's Tesla. And I definitely am starting to form some impressions. It's an SUV. It's a big SUV by, by my standards. I know by like the stands of like a, you know, an Atlas, it's not. But by my standards, it's a pretty big SUV. And you know you're in an SUV. This is not a spirited driver's car. But it does have a fair amount of pep. I mean, it really does. And it is not badly planted on the road. I mean, it does have, you know, a big ass battery hauling it you know, towards the center of the earth through gravity. Is it fun going into a corner? Um, yes, at, at like, at like seven tenths, it's pretty fun. I think this car could really be one of those slow cars that are fun to drive quick. This is not a vehicle you'd take to the track. I would love to try the GTX, which is lowered compared to this, but it's only available in Europe. I'm really liking where I'm sitting. I'm really enjoying this cockpit a lot. It is a very pleasant place to be. It really, really is. And uh, the materials are quite lovely. There's a, you know, there's some road noise, but it's certainly a lot quieter than, uh, than my Tesla. Though I'm told that's gotten better in later Teslas. Man. We're on this really lovely road right now. It's got, it's twisty, it's, it's shaded. I, I like it. It's a nice place to be in the morning. And this is not a bad car to be on it in. Would this be more fun in other things? Maybe. But let's be honest, most people aren't looking for fun as their primary thing in their cars. You know, we want a car that seats the family. We want a car which is comfortable to drive and can be entertaining when we want it to be and can be easy the rest of the time. And so far, that's my biggest takeaway on this is that so far, this is a pretty easy car to drive. It seems like it might be an easy car to live with. And I, I think I could have fun pushing this car to its limits, but you're gonna find those limits a lot faster than you will in many other things. And that's okay. That, that doesn't have to be what it's about. Now, driving this car, not having driven the original rear-wheel drive ID4, how would I feel about this car with 100 less horsepower? Ooh, I don't think I'd be a big fan. This car has a, uh, I feel like this is the right amount of power for this car. I'll know more when I've got a lot more miles under my belt, but yeah, this feels like the right amount of power for this vehicle. There is a satisfying hint of motor whine when you really give it the beans a bit, which is delightful. I've now entered into the central time zone. Very exciting. Thank you. Car did a nice job of letting me know about that. The way the pedal calibration is very interesting on this car. not as planted as I want it to be. You very much know, hey, this is an SUV. It's got more ground clearance even than the rear wheel drive ID4. And it is, it is clearly an SUV. Volkswagen calls it an SUV. And you know you're in an SUV when you're driving it. When, when people drive, for instance, the Mustang Mach-E, they talk about the fact that it's sort of a sports sedan in tall tires. That's not this. This is a proper SUV with the good and bad that come with it. It's incredibly airy and roomy in here. I love this panoramic roof. 
For a car with a lot of weight down low from the batteries, there's a surprising amount of body roll in the corners, much more than I expected. Probably the most body roll of any electric vehicle I've personally driven. M significantly more than, say, a Kona, which is called sort of an SUV, but it's really, or crossover. This is a whole other beast in terms of the scale of vehicle that you're driving, and that's, that's very clear. Really nice in B mode in terms of what you get out of the regenerative braking. Wish it would give you full true so one pedal driving. I think that's, that's a strategic decision on Volkswagen's part that I don't personally like because I'm an EV guy. But this car has been built with the idea of being a car that's very accessible to non-EV drivers. VW makes a real point to the fact that over 80% of ID4 buyers to date have been coming from internal combustion cars, not from other EVs. This is very much designed to be someone's first electric vehicle, and in some ways you really know that when you're driving it. Since we're on this twisty, windy little road, let's see how VW's auto steer handles a road like this. Because I know that our Tesla could handle this just fine. Travel Assist is activated. Nope. Didn't have it in that corner. Let's try again. We'll let it be a little bit slower. It uses a capacitive steering wheel, which I quite like. I don't have to apply any torque to the steering wheel. I just have to be touching it. And we've got a pretty pretty sharp corner coming up here. Let's see what it does. Oh, with a dog crossing the road, it certainly didn't see the dog. You stay, stay where you are. That's good. I wouldn't really have expected it to. I don't think most cars would have. That's why even when you're using systems that are designed to enhance your driver ease when you're driving autonomy systems, you do have to pay attention still. It knows there's a truck in front of me. Interestingly, it knows it's a truck. It's pretty aggressive in cutting the wheel, which is interesting more so than I would have expected in terms of how sharp it goes. Nope, nope, just went off the road. So I'm underwhelmed by you so far, VW uh, steering assistance. I imagine it's fine on a highway, but on a twisty road like this, it's not there. I think the tech could get there. I'm sure it's sensed, in terms of sensors, I'm sure it's perfectly capable, but underwhelmed with its performance on, a, on the twisty. Handling this okay. Nope, it's drifting too far. Yep, it drifted onto the rumble strip again. That is very underwhelming on a road like this. Now, in fairness, this isn't the sort of road where you'd normally want to use a system like that because, you know, this is a fun road to drive. And those systems really are, I think for most people, things you use on the highway. But having lived in the country, with the Tesla, I did really like being able to use uh, autopilot on the Tesla sometimes on a, on a windy road. So, interesting thing to know. So I'm pushing this car relatively hard here. No, let's be honest, I'm pushing this car awfully hard. And it is doing what I, what, what I ask of it. It's not thrilled to do what I ask of it. You definitely feel like it's saying, oh God, oh God, oh God, why are you doing this to me? It's not a, it's not a playful car. I think that's one of my big takeaways so far, is that this is not a playful car. It is a very composed car, it is a very mature car. I feel like I'm describing the ID4 the way Nikki describes it. There's no sense of fun or whimsy in it. It's very Teutonic, it's very like, it's very German, which is kind of funny because I mean, of course, this is VW who make the, the Golf Type R. There is no whimsy in this car. There is no real sense of, of fun exactly in this car. That's very much sort of what I expected. I wasn't expecting a lot of fun, uh, just sort of, because it is an ID4 and that's really not really what you get into the ID4 for. But, uh, 
I think this is a car that would go really well in a garage with another vehicle that was your your little nippy fun car. I think this would be a brilliant car to take on long drives. It's very comfortable. It's very quiet. It has all the power you could possibly need and then some, uh, to be honest. It is, it's a very good car. I think it would be a hard car to fall in love with, but it's a great companion. It is thus far not a vehicle which is, which is raising a lot of passion. It doesn't get my blood hot at all. And that is something that I like in a car. I like a car that gets me excited. And this is not a car which is getting me excited. But it's a car that I'm finding just incredibly pleasant to drive. I mean, really, really lovely. And by sacrificing a bit of that passion, you do get some stuff in response. You know, you do get a level of, of comfort and refinement that is very appealing. And now, travel assistance is on. I do very much feel, in this stretch, like the car has, has the road. Um, and that's very nice. I think if you're not on a real twisty, windy thing, this is really good very much doing what I would want it to do. It just, it's certainly not a, a full-on autopilot. It's not saying you could use all the time when you're driving. The acceleration, I really like how it's delivered. I like it a lot. It definitely, it's more refined than what you get out of a Tesla. And it's a little bit less exciting for it, but I really enjoy the way that it, it, it gives you that power. Like I said, it. You put the pedal down and there's this little, you're starting to accelerate and there's this little feel of like, you sure you want that? You sure you, all right, here it comes. And then it does, it does kick in with some, some good oomph. This size car, I don't think I would want less power. Some great roads in this part of Tennessee, apparently. Just really lovely roads. But I do, I do sort of worry that these roads are not not highlighting this car very well. It's not, it doesn't feel like this car's happy place. It feels like I'm making the car drive this road. I'm, I'm pushing it. I'm saying, no, really, we're gonna do this. And the car is saying, all right, sure. If you want, that's what I'll do. It's not saying, yay, I'm excited. Let's do it. Let's do it, Winter. Let's, let's partner up and have fun. No, it very, it very much feels like it's saying, all right, if this is what you want to do, I'll do it for you. It's not really what I want in a car on a road like this. I want a car that feels happy and playful and excited to be on this road with me. That's not what I'm getting at the ID for. It's very competent. It's a fantastic car. Um, I really, really like it but it's not, it's not got a hint of playfulness. It's not got a hint of whimsy. It's, it's just not what it's designed for. And yet, it'll do it. You wanna see something absolutely delightful, just makes me incredibly happy. That, you have this beautiful panoramic roof and it is really, really beautiful. But having lived with the Tesla's glass roof now for quite a while, there are times when you don't want the glass. There are times when the sun just beats down a little too hard and where, you know, you just want to get some shade. And this car does that. And that may seem like a small thing. It's really not. It's really nice. Be nice if it didn't take so bloody long, but it is an enormous roof on this car. I mean, it is just a massive, massive, massive class roof. I'll be honest, if I was specking out one of these, I'd spring for the roof. I really would. I think it's worth it. I hate saying that because one of the things I like about this car is that it is 
legitimately pretty accessible in terms of cost. Still very much not the low cost EV of our dreams. You know, the ID Life is half of this, if the ID Life ever makes it to market. But, you know, a starting price for an all wheel drive, 300 ish, slightly under, horsepower uh, electric SUV coming in at about 44, just under 44 grand. That's pretty great. You don't get the range of, for instance, a uh, Model Y. Model Y gets, oh my goodness, probably close to 100 miles more range. But 250 miles of range is still nothing to sneeze at. I think it's fine for most people. You've got pretty good DC fast charge speeds on the CCS network, which is growing larger and larger every day. But that said, I'd probably have to take it to the, I don't know, 46 and a half, 47, whatever it is, uh, to get that roof because goodness, it's lovely. Cars don't always have to be fun. They can just be good. And that's, I'm not saying that it, it's good asterisk. I'm saying that it's good. It's a properly good SUV. If what you want is an SUV, if that's, if that's what you're looking for, and for a lot of people that very much is, my family is without a hatchback or SUV for the first time in a very long time because I, I don't count the think. And, you know, it is something that we are missing. It's just such a pleasant place to be. And it just does so many things really well. And you don't feel like you're making a lot of sacrifices on it until you hit a really good, really fun, really twisty road. And then then you know that you bought an SUV, but you know, hopefully if you're buying an SUV, you're going into that, you know, with your eyes open. I see a lot of VWs around here because we're in the Chattanooga area and uh, they're very, very passionate here in Chattanooga about Volkswagen and the Volkswagen plant. Uh, the plant's really done an enormous amount for the community. And uh, that's not just VW saying that. I've had a chance to speak to some locals who've talked really very, very positively about the influence that the Volkswagen plant has had on the community. It's really revitalized the city and, and people seem to really love VW for it. I haven't tested one of the most important features to me on a car. Should I test it now? Let's do it. Oh, that is extraordinarily stiff. Get that out. Ah, it extends. Ah, extending sunshades, so important to me. Everything on this car just feels so solid, so well built. It does feel like a tank. I mean, and that to me is a hallmark of modern Volkswagen. I owned an 07 uh, VW Rabbit slash Golf, uh, and it was just, it was such a well sorted car. More fun to drive than this, but then again, this is an SUV. Everything feels really, really well done up here. I will say I rode in the back of one of these yesterday, and I was very impressed with the leg room, very impressed with the seat comfort. The door panel for the passenger, I found very chintzy. It wasn't rattly, it wasn't loose. It just felt very, very plasticky. You know, to be honest, the some of the, the appointments in my think felt better than the than the back door interface and I, up front I'm not wowed by you know the the panel that you grab onto up front either lots of piano black in this car that's a trend I'd really like to see die a, a fiery death in the automotive world no more piano black just just automakers just stop it please and I got to give Tesla credit for that our model 3 long range 2018 and it has just sea of piano black and it's terrible. We've wrapped most of it in vinyl wrap. But the new Model 3s and Model Ys, they, they did away with a lot of the piano black, which I think was a really good call. This car still has, still has too much of it. Looks sharp, but scratches really easily, shows fingerprints really easily. And it just, it's time for it to end. I could imagine going cross country in this car. I really could. That's not, I don't feel that way about every car. Uh, obviously did it in the Model 3, 
was a really, really, really good experience. Um, really liked that car going cross country, except that it's very loud. The Model 3 is a terribly loud car on the inside on the highway. Um, but I could, I could easily imagine doing that with this car. Gosh, that is nice. Definitely not Model 3 territory, but it is nice. And the chassis feels good when you give this car hard acceleration. Like, it, it doesn't feel uncontrolled at all. It feels really well planted and really well sorted in that hard, a straight line acceleration. The engineers who designed and built this car definitely knew what they were doing. Brake feel on this car, by the way, is, is quite good. You do activate regen with braking. The brake pedal sort of blends regen and friction brakes in a way which is quite nice. Really pleased overall with this car. I think I like it more than Nikki does, but I don't think that my impressions are all that different from hers on the, uh, on the ID4. Some cars you drive and you think, this, this is a driver's car. This isn't. But it doesn't have to be. Not everyone wants a driver's car. And between you and me, sometimes driver's cars, they get tiring. You don't always want to get into your car that's gonna, gonna push you. You don't always want to get into a car that's gonna bite you in the ass if you don't pay 100% of your attention to it. You don't always want to get into a car that's compromised in order to be fun and sporty. I'd love to own a Lotus Elise, but goodness, I don't think I'd want to live with one on a daily basis as my only car. And that's where this comes in. This is a fabulous, fabulous car for what it is. And it doesn't pretend to be anything that it's not. And I kind of really respect it for that. So through the magic of editing, I'm still standing right where I was a moment ago, but I've driven the car in between. So let's talk about what we thought of the ID4 all-wheel drive. And the first, first, first thing you're gonna to wanna to know is, is it still your boring old uncle? Well, it is still your old uncle. He still natters on about your 401k, but this time he's joined a band. So what do you get in the all-wheel drive? Well, the first thing and the thing that a lot of people are gonna care about is you get about 95 more horsepower and you feel it. This car does zero to 60 in 5.4 seconds. Now, in the EV world, that may not seem blazingly quick. It's not a two second car, like a Model S Plaid. But then again, it's not pretending to be, and it's not filling that niche. And I'll be honest, our older Tesla does about the same zero to 60 time, and I never feel like I need more. And when I was driving this car, I never felt like it was lacking for power. What's my takeaway? Remember, not a review. First impressions. We will be doing a review of one of these in the hopefully not citizen future, but there's some things you're gonna to want to know about. And there's some things that I think make this car make perfect sense for the American market where we are right now. So I don't have everything tucked in my head. I'm gonna to have to look at my book for a few things. I apologize, but you know, I'm not quite Nicky yet. It's all right, you get 94 more horsepower. That doesn't sound like a huge, huge, huge deal, but it's almost a third more horsepower than the original ID4 for a very, very tiny amount of weight gain from what I understand. And it's got the pep you want. It's not a rocket ship. It doesn't drive like a rocket ship, but as SUVs go, it's a lot of oomph. And it's a lot of oomph without any carbon emissions. You get 2,700 pounds of towing capacity. Which, I mean, no, I can already hear in the comments saying, I can't tow my boat with that. That's true, but this is a compact SUV, not generally the market where there's a lot of boat towing involved. You get about, what did I say? You get a range of 249 miles, which is honestly a lot for most people's use. 
and you only sacrifice 11 miles of range over the ID4 rear wheel drive, which is fantastic given that you gain 94 horsepower and you gain all wheel drive, which if you live in a place with inclement weather could be a big deal. And my understanding is it has made a real difference in the handling. We'll get to that in just a minute. The car's been raised about uh, six tenths of an inch from what I understand uh, over the ID4 rear wheel drive. I don't know how much of a difference that really is going to make in your general experience of it, but it highlights one of the real differences between this car and its spiritual sibling, the ID4 GTX. The GTX in Europe gets the all wheel drive, but that car is actually lowered off the rear wheel drive model and is definitely a more sporty oriented variant. This car, I don't know that sporty is the word that immediately leaps to mind to me for all that it is legitimately very, very pleasant to drive. So the thing you have to understand is that in this car's segment, more than 50% are all wheel drive. So bringing the all wheel drive to America is vitally important for Volkswagen really making inroads into the segment and doing it with the electric car. I honestly think this is the right car at the right time for VW in America. And this car will very soon be built in America here in Chattanooga, Tennessee, which is really exciting. And depending on how things go, may open it up for some additional uh, financial incentives from the government. So what did I think of it? I really like this car. And I know it's transport evolved. So you might think that sounds all weird because Nikki, if you remember, was pretty underwhelmed by the rear wheel drive variant. I don't know that my experience of this car is really that, that different than Nikki's with the rear wheel drive. Although she found that car sluggish, this car, definitely not sluggish. Power delivery is incredibly well refined. It doesn't immediately slam your head back into the seat rest like a Tesla might. Instead, you get a really nice build of power on the way to zero to 60 in 5.4 seconds that I, I was quite fond of. For the media drive, they've had us, as you saw, on this really beautiful, twisty, windy road. And to me, that was a bit of a strategic blunder. This car, it's not fun. It's not a car that you take out on a back road on a Sunday morning and slam it into the corners. It's not what it's for. And it doesn't show very well there. It'll do it. I was really impressed with how well this car handled. But all along, the car was sort of saying to me, really, this is what you want to do right now. It's not a car that puts an immediate smile on my face. It's not a car that made me giggle. It's not a car that I got in and thought, damn, this is fun. But I loved it. I absolutely loved it. So if we're going to talk about what matters on this car, we've got to talk about price. That's something we talk about a lot here at Transport Evolve. We talk a lot about the need for more affordable cars. Is this gonna be what you call affordable? Well, it's no ID Life at 25K. But the ID Life, it's not gonna be available till 2025. This car starts at just under 44,000 US dollars. And that's before incentives. The VW is still eligible for the federal tax credit. You may have state and local incentives as well. And at that price, you get a lot of car. You really, really, really do. At 44 grand, you're getting a very nicely equipped car. You're getting something really solid. You're getting 250 miles of range. You're getting 5.40 to 60 time. And you can step that up a bit. You throw a few more thousand dollars at Volkswagen and you can get a truly glorious panoramic sunroof, which has an automatic shade. Why can't Tesla put a shade in their cars? We had to buy aftermarket ones for ours. It's just, I wanted to come away saying that your boring old uncle uh, had had a glow up and it had become a true performance car, the way that I think the GTX may promise to be. And it's not that. But if you want an incredibly pleasant, uh, pretty efficient, nice ranged, pretty damn well handling and just solid 
beautiful car for the price for what you get I honestly think Volkswagen has a winner here and it is if not the car that I would dream about it is absolutely the car that the market is asking for that's it for today if you liked the video be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and our other two channels Transport Evolve Take 2 and Transport Evolve Shorts we know that while a fair few of you already are subscribed many more aren't so go on hit the bell and help us out let us know below what you thought of this video, and if you're not someone who likes the YouTube's comment section, which is understandable, then why not continue this over on our Discord server? It's free, and we'll leave a link below. Thanks on behalf of the entire T crew, go out to the folks on my right for being our 15 to 49 dumb month patrons. Special thanks to our 50 to month patrons, David Jenakula, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahada, Brophy Wolf, Taz on the Gong, Paul Conway, Sean Ueda, Gordon C, Raging Fellows, Anomalous Freak, Jim Burness, Kyle Hodson, Anthony Coates, Laura Sanborn, Rory Litwin, and Denny Hyde. And our deepest gratitude to 100 all month Patreon supporters John Lyons, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, Ellery Hennessy, and Ian. If you'd like to join the ranks of our wonderful supporters, you'll find links below to Patreon, Bitcoin, and Kofi. And of course, you can also buy your very own Transport Evolve swag over on our Redbubble store. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving!